Today, we're going to learn the story behind this bottle. The name St. Joseph's assures purity on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Our story starts with a guy named Leopold Gersel, who was born in 1845 in Germany. Here's an Ellis Island, New York passenger list that shows that he comes to America in 1854 with his family when he was eight years old. With his dad Abraham, his mom Jeanette, and his two brothers. So, the 1860 census shows the family in Tennessee, which is where Leopold ends up living out the rest of his life. Leopold is 14 now in this census. His dad is just listed as a merchant. I wish I knew what he was selling. Did he have his own business or did he work for somebody? I don't know. Leopold, who apparently goes by Lee sometimes, married Alice December 7th, 1868. He's 23. They had eight children together, but only six survived. She confirmed this on two census records. That's sad that they lost two babies. In the 1880 census, he's 35 now. He lives in Union City and he lists his occupation as a dry goods merchant. There's a website that had done a little research on this guy, and they say that he built his house and a general goods store right on the same block. They say that his house still stands, but that little general store burned down in the 1990s. According to that website with the research, they have that the St. Joseph's Medicine started in 1887. That would work with the research that I found, I don't see a record before 1891, but the city directory shows Leopold and his company in Chattanooga, which lists them as manufacturing druggists and chemists. His son Samuel, who is 18, is listed as the general manager of L. Gersel and Company. Five years later, the 1896 directory words it a little differently. It says manufacturing chemists and proprietors of St. Joseph Family Medicines. And here's the ad in that year's directory. I tried finding where his office was, but all I could find about Electric Railway is this ticket. It lists Highland Park, which is where it specifically says the office is. L. Gersel and Company was the proprietors of St. Joseph's Sarsaparilla, St. Joseph's Liver Regulator, which looks like this, Gersel's Female Panacea, and I love this ad, you should actually pause it and read it. By the way, panacea means a solution or remedy for all difficulties or diseases. Then we have St. Joseph's Quick Relief, which I assume must be a laxative. I also found a cool worm medicine bottle as well. It says the corner of Chamberlain and Maple. That's not an intersection anymore. Sam is listed as general manager of the store and he'd be 22 here. Now here's the ad in the 1899 city directory. It looks very similar to the 1896 ad. And completely off topic, look at the page right before this ad. I just thought it was a really cool ad. Look how fancy that 1899 carriage is. I just wanna call them and have them make me one right now. <laughs> so now we're at the 1900 census. Leopold is 55 now. His son Samuel is 26 and he's still helping run the business. I thought it was interesting to see that there are two other people living in this house, a black female and a black male. The male is listed as a driver and the female is listed as a cook. And here's the 1906 directory. It lists Leopold as president of the company. It shows Sam as vice president and Harry as secretary and treasurer. Now here it says manufacturers of GFP, which stands for Gersel's Female Panacea and St. Joseph's Remedies. Check out that phone number, 517, that's it. And it says their address is 520 East 4th Street. Well, there isn't a 520 anymore, so it could be either one of these houses. Here's a little family songbook with the St. Joseph's name on it. It looks like early 1900s to maybe the 1910s with a picture of his little shop. I tried to look inside to see what kind of songs were in there, and I found an Amazon St. Joseph's Children's Catholic Songbook. Is this the same St. Joseph? I, I don't know. 
Then we see in the 1910 census, Leopold is 64, still working, still manufacturing drugs. His two boys are still working and living with him. Samuel is 37 and single, while Harold, Harry, or Hal in this case, I've seen him called all three, he's 28 and widowed. Poor guy. There are two different servants living at the home at this time, a woman who's a cook and a male who is a coachman. In the 1913 directory, it still lists them all working together, but the next time we see Leopold, he's died in 1915 of natural causes. He was 69. A few years later, we see the boys and they're still working at the company. This is 1919. Then, two years later in 1921, it shows the boys living with their mom still, but it doesn't mention the business at all. Then we go to 1925, it shows them still living with their mom. Sam is doing something with the Letterer School of Art. Their mom, Alice, dies later that year in 1925. Sam dies two years later in 1927, and it says from heart degeneration. He was only 54. His occupation on his death certificate said that he was a retired merchant. By 1929, Hal had gotten remarried to a lady named Abby. I was thinking, good for him. Then I see this poor guy died later that year. It says that he died from Malta fever, which is caused by ingesting unpasteurized milk or undercooked meat from an infected animal. He was only 49. It says his occupation at the time was a broker in the lumber industry. So as far as the company goes, I wasn't coming up with anything. What did the boys do with it? Finally, I stumbled on some St. Joseph aspirins. It was today's packaging, but I thought it's a long shot, but I went to the website and there it says the brand was created by the Gersel company. So boom, okay, we're on the right track. They go on to say that Plow Incorporated bought the St. Joseph's brand of aspirin in 1920. Okay, yes, that works perfect for what I found. Because remember in the 1921 directory, there was no mention of the company listed with the boys. So, but it specifically said that they bought the aspirin. It doesn't say that they bought any of the other remedies. But I guess they had to because my bottle has a date stamped of 1937. The single digit means that it's the 1930s. And I don't think there was a liquid aspirin. Yeah, I doubt there was aspirin that would have come in a flask. So they had to have had a few of the other remedies for a little while, it seems. This flask is super thin. It barely stands on its own. It's very hard to see with the naked eye. I had to zoom the lens on here to see that the seam does go up to the top. So it seems to be machine made, but it does have bubbles and it does look to have irregularities like a blown bottle. I think it's machine made though, and it's a cork top. Anyways, it seems that the aspirin is the only thing left of that company that's still going. But hey, that's not bad if you ask me. I mean, you're talking like 150-ish years? I'll leave you with this cartoon from 2007. That's Baby Jesus. And that's St. Joseph. Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah, St. Joseph is famous. After he moved his family back home, he started a business, making aspirin for children. <laughs> and that's it for this episode. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.